They huh? tested him. He had some kidney issues, and so he's he's here with us. He's awesome. healthy now. He's a beautiful dog. Yes, he is, yeah. and he could be adopted. He could go. Um, we would love to see him go to a local. Oh, I don't need any more puppies. I don't need any more puppies. Welcome to the channel, guys. Today, I took a little trip out to Furry Tails Rescue, and we toured a few properties. We toured a couple of their foster uh, homes that they use for dogs that are rescued, uh, awaiting transport or adoption. Uh, I believe the first place we went had 24 uh, fosters. Uh, also had a couple of puppies with Parvo that they were treating. Uh, wonderful ladies, all of them. But I want you to see this video. It shows the reality of dog rescue. And it's not easy, and sometimes it isn't pretty. Uh, the end result is to try to get them into decent homes, and it's very hard work. So I went out, and I took some time, and we went around to their different places and and shot some video where you're going to see a lot of dogs uh you'll see us uh one of the fosters is a like the sanctuary for older dogs uh blind dogs there's deaf dogs uh there's a dog with a very large tumor uh you'll see in the video but they're being very well cared for um it, it's amazing what they do um so check out the video uh, you know, I did the whole month of Dogtober, and I'm just going to give them half of my uh, earnings from YouTube, and so we're doing that. But that money's just a drop in the bucket as to what is required to do what they do. I mean, just the medications alone, and a lot of it's donated, but a lot of it is not donated. And you know, the just the sheer amount of food and things that are needed, uh, pant kennels, things like that, especially if you got parvo dogs. Uh, it's not easy so i hope you enjoy the video uh but uh, hopefully some you know a lot of people will see this they had no idea that that there are people behind the scenes doing this kind of work every day not just this rescue but there are many 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 others and and the number one problem is funding it's always been that way and it always probably will be uh there's no you know government checks coming in to pay for a dog rescue uh there's no state checks so i'm gonna make this short uh it's quite a long video i think it's close to 40 minutes but uh, uh it was something i wanted to do to let you know where your donations go and uh, the ones of you who have donated where that money's going what it's being used for uh and hopefully we can raise some more money for them so i will have a link in the description there are three ways you can donate to them actually four if you don't want to mess with that just send it to me i paypal it right over to them uh paypal is probably the best way it doesn't charge anything just make sure you send it actually uh, the last time i sent it i hit donate there's a section where you can donate to your favorite charity and they are a 501c so they'll just type in furry tails rescue they should come up and there's no fees and so if you send it and they try to charge you you send it the wrong way or you can send it as friends and family thank you and uh hopefully we can get these guys some help i pulled over to use my phone and way out here in the boonies I, i'm like i don't know if i'll get a signal and then i look over it's a verizon wireless tower I don't get no better than that all bars i don't think i've ever had all bars and then, old Roy took over the company. You not gonna listen to my story? Okay. We are where Furry Tails Rescue keeps a lot of their dogs, one of the fosters. And we're just gonna kinda let her show you the routine. Okay, I feed the dogs twice a day. I'd like to see everybody at least twice and sometimes three times. So I dump that food up into these barrels. And how many dogs do you have here? 23. 23 dogs. Right now I've got two with Parvo. They're in the house. They're isolated from all the rest of the 
and wizard. Uh, we're fortunate that we get donations from a couple of retailers uh, every two or three weeks. And I go to Maumelle or Russellville and pick up the donated food. So I get first dibs. <laughs> <laughs> I keep my buckets full. But I, right there are my empty sacks and all those bags are full. And that is three weeks worth yes. of feeding dogs. Now my food. dogs are always fat and sometimes I have to scale <laughs> them back. But I, if they've got a little meat on their bones and they get sick, I have a better chance of yeah. Uh, keep them going. So, yeah, so that's three weeks of food at one foster home. We have 25 different foster homes. So, um, you can see how much food we go through, just food. Mm -hmm. And at Debbie's house, we have the luxury of letting some of our dogs be free range because we're just up here in the open and they're not at risk. Um, we don't have that at every foster home. And, you know, right. if somebody lives on the highway, we don't want that. But, um, up here, they're they're happy. So we have Wizard, who is a little bit um, mad about having to share his food this morning. And then we have Mandy. Mandy has nine puppies, and she does look really skinny right now. Um, but we have not had her very long. And if you saw her when she came in, this is an amazing transformation from that. And then we have... Freckles is behind Miss Debbie. <laughs> Freckles is a permanent foster. Um, I got some of them. Yeah, we have, and then up here, I don't know that you'll see them, but we have two feral dogs um, that Audrey and Debbie both worked with for about a year and a half, and we still couldn't touch them, and so they were spayed and set free, and they hate everyone, um, but they get fed and they get preventatives, and their names are Claire and Queso. This back here is Hester. What's up, Hester? And she also has puppies. She has five little pity puppies, and she's what I would call a pocket pit, and she is beautiful and very sweet. And I think we're going to go over and meet Gates, who is awaiting heartworm treatment. Okay. All right, we're here with Gates, named after Bill Gates. He's going to run right out. Oh, he ran into that room. He has his routine. Are you silly? He's ready to eat. You're silly, you're in a pet coon. When we took him to have him uh, neutered and heartworm tested, he weighed 68 pounds, and I'm afraid to know now. <laughs> Gates. He ain't starving. Hi, Daddy. Hi, sweet boy. Gates. And guys, heartworm treatment is not cheap. No, um, so we treat everybody for 30 days with doxycycline under the instruction of our vets. And then we have injections done on them, which mm -hmm. we have to because we transport dogs. So to send into other states, we're required to have them treated for heartworms, um, which we would anyway because heartworms are death sentence. But uh, a dog the size of Gates can cost anywhere from 600 to twelve hundred dollars to treat for heartworms and I'd say that's on the cheaper end mm -hmm. um, and we do that here instead of when we send to other states because for example our rescue partners in Minnesota um, it would probably cost co close to four thousand to treat him there so every dog is on preventatives I really like this one um, Semperica Trio and it treats heartworms intestinal worms fleas and ticks um, also treats mange and we do this monthly on all of our dogs and, um, and how much would a box be like with six chewables in it um close to two hundred dollars wow and we go through lots of this so if you're looking for something to invest in on the stock market we will keep you afloat um, there you go we go through a lot of this i just need a one is he ready for his yet? not till the 15th no till the 15th Yes, I just gave him his okay. preventative oh, okay. on the first. And so we use this on puppies too. Also, our vets have really instructed us on when we can give, and that may be different than what they tell the general public, but we have a large quantity of dogs. So we also use this um, on puppies because it's a really good general dewormer. Yes, and I'm taking care of a 
puppy that needs worming, and I gave him a first dose orally, and he bit me, and it hurt, so he's getting... I'm gonna make it a one yeah. trick. And none of my dogs like getting. They know when it's medicine. They know, yeah. and they run. So you'll. All right, who are we going to see now? Well, we're going out to the puppy palace. That's what Miss Debbie calls where she keeps her puppies. But after that, we're gonna go see Roxy, and Roxy is now Miss Debbie's dog because she hates everyone that moves. Um, but we hold Roxy and another dog <clears throat> all the way to North Carolina. Um, and we got out there and she, she honestly, she, she bit someone. Um, she was fine. We would not have taken her had we known that she was going to do that because we don't put aggressive dogs in people's homes. Uh, but Roxy just lost her mind and she bit. So we were, we had taken a couple days to stay on the beach after we got out to North Carolina after that drive. And uh, we had to go back and get her and bring her all the way back to Arkansas. Mm. And she's still with Debbie because Debbie's the only one that she likes. She yep. Roxy had been here with me in the box. That's a pen that they can't climb over or they can't climb out of. It's totally uh -huh. paneled. But I could let her out and she would sit in my lap. Well, she weighed a lot. She weighs a lot more now. And she weighs a lot more now. <laughs> what kind of so, dog is it? She's a pit mix. Red, okay. Red she pit. had had puppies, and she didn't like being separated from the puppies. Um, but I was really surprised that she was a biter because she never offered, she never growled at me, nothing. But you let somebody else walk up to that pen, and she would tell them. I, I had gotten, I got her in and out of the crate on transport to walk her. So had Audrey, and I fed her cheeseburger and pizza and. She was perfectly fine, but she just doesn't. She's very particular. I'll say that about her. So she's not okay. lying. <laughs> well, we'll go see. Yeah. And this is where the dogs can run. Look at this property. Plenty of room. Cut real low to the ground. And this is where the puppies are. Puppy palace. And here's the puppies. Oh, I don't need any more puppies. I don't need any more puppies. Yeah. What's your name, Grover? <laughs> they look healthy. Okay, and what do we got in the bowls here? Okay, this is a dried puppy food and this is milk replacer multi-species when I have puppies from the time they're two weeks old until I feel like they're ready I feed them this two or three times a day I do that because if a puppy will not eat it's sick and if a puppy won't eat and it's sick it's generally parvo especially pity puppies so I'm very particular to watch them closely. And these guys, I found them running down the middle of a road and stopped and got them. They have not had the best life until now. They look good. These are our, our pity puppies um, and their mom obviously is a pit bull. And we do take pit bulls. I know that not all rescues do. Um, we like them, but in my foster program, if you if you aren't uncomfortable with them, we we don't have any fosters that take dogs that they're uncomfortable with. So that's your choice. Debbie is, um, but we have really great rescue partners that we send dogs to that really vet their people before our pits go home. Mm -hmm. That's really important to us because so many people are cruel to these dogs just because of. Um, I don't even know, stereotype is the right word. Um, but they're great dogs, and any dog, any dog can be dangerous. Pit bulls can be dangerous, but so can German Shepherds. And I know and, that firsthand. I was attacked by my own dog yeah. of nine years because sometimes they're like humans. They're, they got mental illness. They snap. I mean, I have scars on me from corgis and chihuahuas, and, yep. and, and I, I don't ever want to say that a pit bull can't hurt you. They can any dog can hurt you, but we're, right. we're a fan here. 
of them and uh, they're a little bit harder to place. We have them a lot longer than we do other breeds just because they're harder to move, but um, they can be really sweet dogs. Look at you. It's okay, mama, it's okay. Not gonna hurt your babies. They're in there chowing down. All right, guys, it's another look at how Many puppies are dealt with here all the time. Look at these little guys. Boy, they look good. Nice coats. Well, you got out. Wants that good rainwater. <laughs> Lots of puppy breath. And guys, if anybody says, oh, the water's dirty, well, of course, they're, they're kicking up stuff into it. You try to keep clean water 24 7 for puppies. Yeah, that's the same with mine. Mine get, my full grown dogs get the water dirty. Look at him go after that puppy food and milk. And he got nice warm hay in there. This is the farm where I grew up. I have me and my sister in there. This is the one that uh, they had to bring back from North Carolina. Hey, Hot Roxy! Hey, Roxy! Good girl! When I have the luxury of extra panels, I'd like to make what I call a trap. Uh -huh. That way, if I have a dog that's a problem and I go in to take care of them, I don't have to worry about them becoming a free dog. Right. Hey, What's up, girl? Let's see if Dog Man can. What are you doing? Oh, it's okay. It's okay. And she probably don't like tall people. You want me to get down low? Okay. Yeah. Good girl. See? Sometimes, guys, we don't, you don't never know what these backgrounds of these dogs are. So they're just doing what they think, you know, they have to do to defend themselves. Two days ago, we had a bald eagle. I worried about my puppies becoming lunch. Yeah, when I worked. 
worked at the ranch there, you gotta watch when they show up. They'll get, they'll even grab a full-grown chicken. At one point, we had a lot of pigs. And our baby pigs were really susceptible to hawks and eagles and coyotes. Looks like the dogs have a blast out here, running around. At one point, we had a little pug that loved to chase deer. It was hysterical. She was a little short-legged dog, but she'd give it all she had. I get a big kick out of them. That's got to be hard physically, too. I know that. Well, I, I give out right now because I've got those three sick puppies, and I take care of them every four hours. They get something. So that means sleepless nights. But they're improving. They're all going to survive. And uh, that's worth it. Well, you guys, when you have puppies with parvo, it is a lot of work. You got to give them fluids. You got to put IVs in them very often. And a lot of times they don't make it. But a lot of times they do. So it's not easy watching young puppies not make it. All right, not only uh, are cash donations good, but what do we have here? Um, we have really great vets, and they're available to us like pretty much 24-7. And they don't have to be. We don't expect that, but they're just really good people. And sometimes when they have leftover medical supplies, um, they hook us up with this. Um, so I don't even know what all's in here. Big syringes. We go through so much stuff. This is a uh, IV mm -hmm. setup. Setup, yes. And um, so <laughs> you shouldn't do an IV at home if you don't know what you're doing. But we have so many Parvo puppies that they have helped us learn how to do fluids at home, um, so we can save a little bit of money. Surgical gloves. There's some iodine in here. Um, Lots of good stuff that we can go through and use. And I see they donated some next guards. That, them are twenty dollars a piece. Yes, a whole. So box. that's a big donation a there. Whole bag full of next guard. That's huge. Um, that saves us a lot. We go through a ton of these aren't puppy pads, but they can be used as such. We go through a ton of puppy pads. Um, so anything like that's great. Go to the care center down at the property. Um, Yes, we'll take those down there. Gauze, sponges, I don't know what that is, but I'm sure we can use it. Yeah. Your name is Diane Moffin, and this is my living. <laughs> anyway, this little dog, how long ago was it? Two or three months? Yeah, three or four months. Uh, an officer in uh, off duty and his daughter drove up in the driveway one day and they said that uh, they no okay. don't don't be bad uh, that they'd heard about this place here about people that you know have dogs that are just no good anymore and everything and so he uh, had this dog on his lap this little dog has no eyes and he's crippled up but he's my little bubby, and he will not let Jesse touch him. No. <laughs> Jess, Jesse helps, does everything. This is my dog. That's Dexter. He's been my dog for many years. He's kind of the old gentleman here because every new dog that comes in, he says, okay. He accepts them or doesn't? He hasn't come to that yet. <laughs> anyway. anyway. I'm gonna let you. His name is Arthur. Yeah, Arthur. What you doing, Arthur? Yes. <laughs> Are you a so good the, boy. The officer, um, the officer that found him, it wasn't their dog, but. Oh no. Huh? No, he found him. He found him on the sidewalk, and. Yes, he wasn't sure if he was alive or what it was at that point, and you know he's a dog, but he, you can, he knows. He does not want anybody else to touch him but Miss <laughs> Diane, um, and that's fine. And I honestly, 
I didn't think that he would live very long, but he's been here for uh, three mm -hmm. months, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and he just enjoys laying around, and he eats, and this little girl under the chair. Oh, that's Oh, what that's. you got a rooster smile with the <laughs> little snaggly teeth. That is Sergeant Marge. Um, she also only likes Miss Moppin. Mm-hmm. And she, so what this is, is our sanctuary. Yes. Um, I'm going to go put him back on his bed. Okay. Talk. <laughs> okay. Oh, 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 what, is that all right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's, um, yes, my boy. it's our senior sanctuary mm -hmm. that You're we, not going in. No. that we call Furry Tales Forever. And, uh, and uh, Oliver uh, has made it to the edge of the kitchen if you want to try to. Okay. Cook some out. Get him so out. Get we back, have dogs here that get are back, deemed get back, get back. unadoptable for um, certain reasons, usually because of age or health reasons, and we want to give them, um, we want to give them comfort, and we want to keep them spoiled until it's time for them to pass, and then we want that to be comfortable for them as well. So we keep them here. So this is Bumper that Audrey's petting, and Bumper is really not that old, but uh, when we picked him up, because he had untreated tick disease, he was blind in both eyes, and a couple months ago, we actually had to remove one of the eyes because it was just too much pressure. Um, it was really uncomfortable for him. There you go. Oh. Oliver. Hey, Oliver. Oh, look at him. <laughs> but he, yeah. Yeah. Oliver. Looks like a stuffed bear. <laughs> we think Oliver's about 14. He's a Cocker Spaniel. Um, he was heavy heartworm positive. He's completely deaf. He is going blind. Yes. We got him from the Little Rock Animal Sanctuary, and I normally don't do that. But I had a Cocker Spaniel for 16 years, um, and so I have a really soft spot for them. So when I saw him posted online oh, and that he was a senior and needed somewhere to go, okay. yeah, it's we okay. got him. And then this big guy is Little Bear. He, was <laughs> he ain't little. Little Bear. It's he, not a treat. It's a microphone. Yeah. <laughs> he says, stick it down shot. here, I'll lick it for you. He was hit by a car, and the family that had him couldn't afford to take care of that. So we got him, when we got him to the vet, um, we had him neutered, heartworm tested. He was heartworm positive. We got him back home after the neuter, and he, he literally almost died before we could get him back to the vet. So in 45 minutes, he had thrown a blood clot to his lungs. Um, and they tested him. He had some kidney issues, and so he's he's here with us. He's That's healthy a, now. He's a beautiful dog. Yes, he is. Yeah. And he could be adopted. He could go. Um, we would love to see him go to a local home. He's very sweet. He loves all these little guys. Great with cats. Great with kids. So yeah, yeah. yeah. He's he's ready. He's and, healthy. And this, again. this one right here thinks he is that one's boss. Yeah. <laughs> That's how it works usually. The little one. Yeah, you can't bring another dog into my house. Rooster will run him out. She ain't but 15 pounds. So Oliver is at an age where we have not felt comfortable doing heartworm injections because of his age, because they are rough on a body. So we treat him slowly with doxycycline and heartworm prevention, and he is on Lasix um, most of the time to keep the fluid off, but he does cough. Oh, he coughs, and when when he gets started coughing, it's it's like he's just yeah. tearing down the house. Mm. Oliver's due for a groom too. Yeah. Well, that yeah. big old feet on you. you got an afro. Yeah, you heard me, didn't you? <laughs> It would, be the it would be the second time that he's been there. You don't see many Cocker Spaniels around here. No. I, I don't think I ever had one in the rescue. <laughs> no. This is my little man. Well, we've had a mix. We've had a mix. These are all fosters out here too, but Zena is part of our sanctuary. Um, you can see that she has a large tumor on her chest. Oh, wow. And, yeah. and we have had her checked multiple times. Um, the vets say that the blood supply is um, it's just inoperable. It would kill her to take it off or even to reduce it in size. So she's comfortable and we just let her be. And when, when she's not comfortable, then we'll take care of it. Wow. Yeah, I mean, she's not showing like she's in pain or no, anything. No, and she gets to get out and run around. Everybody does. She has this big pen to herself. Okay. Herself. Okay. It's all right, Zane. Okay. And then we'll, we're going to see Harold. Oh, we're going to see Harold.
Yeah. This is Harold. Okay. Sweet Harold. He's also awaiting heartworm treatment. And when we say that, it just means we're trying to raise funds right. to get enough to treat them. I do not like to have dogs on lines permanently, and we don't. I, I would not do this permanently. But sometimes when they're escape artists and we're only going to have them a month, it's just a necessity to keep them safe. And this is Rayleigh. Um, she was left by some people in our community that moved off and left her and her eight puppies. She is a sweet dog, so she has been spayed now, so no more puppies for her, and we've got all of the puppies, and they'll all be spayed and neutered as well. They all got great big kennels. Yes, we like space. Yeah, and, and guys, nobody likes to put dogs in kennels, but when, you, when you're when doing stuff on this level to get them to their forever homes or whatever, you, you have to. Well, it's a temporary discomfort for forever. Yeah. All right, we are a couple miles away from our last stop, and this is going to be their new medical facility. We'll get inside here. She can explain what she's planning to do. Newport, I, I hope. <laughs> Pressure wash the outside at the very least. Oh, I thought you were saying this was a new porch. No, like, no. Yeah, 1950 need, it was. We need a new porch. Um, desperately need a new porch here. And then obviously the outside needs to be worked on. And then this is a bare bones situation here. So. And guys, what we're trying to, we're talking about doing is getting a bunch of people together for a weekend, you know, maybe one day, maybe two, whoever can stay, and get this knocked out. This is the room that I have envisioned we will use as the dog center. So I want linoleum up the walls. Um, every, the, the most important thing to me is that we can sterilize so I want to um, put flooring and then linoleum up so that we can easily clean. We'll keep parvo dogs, dogs with you know bloody situations, amputees, things like that, yeah. in here so that they're not outside. And they sell those thin panels that like they're like shower walls. We put it up at the yes. rescue in Waldron. Yes. I don't know what they cost now, but something has to be washable. Right. We'll also use the kitchen area for medical treatment because a lot of medications need to be refrigerated yes it's like a fairly new ac yes and in that other trailer there is a ac heater in it because this trailer ran on gas heat and we're, we're cutting the gas um, but we'll put that unit in here so that we can keep it warm in this room and then a space heater in the in the other room this is there's no electricity in here right now but this is the bathroom. Spider web in the face. Yeah. And then I will put, this obviously needs flooring and something on the walls too, but um, a twin bed in here for a human to stay when we have dogs that need treatment. And then we will use this as a storage. If you saw all of our bedrooms in our houses, they're just all full of stuff that we have nowhere to put. So I hope that we can use this for that and then another another expense lots of expense in this this has to be replaced um i would love to have a ramp here <clears throat> and then i want to fence in this area so that we have an area that we know you know we can let them outside if they're able to go outside and that we can keep other dogs from coming into because if you're dealing with parvo you, you can't cross contaminate. Yeah, so you gotta, gotta be careful. Contain them. Oh, yeah. Got hookups for washer and dryer in there. Yeah. Sorry, guys, if the lighting's bad, there's no light in there. Yeah. So. But I, I'm not looking for anything fancy, but obviously, like, this is gonna take a lot of work. Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of kills. Yeah. Uh, I'm wondering about what's what's yeah. under there. It's kind of saggy. Yeah, hallway too. Yeah. So all that is probably yeah, gonna have to be ripped out. The hallway panel as well. Yeah, that yes, moisture probably got in there. It's a lot of it's a lot of work. This is kind of a dream project. 
Let's, Let's look at the property. Okay. It's flat, pretty much. And so this one they're having removed, right? Yes. Big yards. Some outside space off the back door. Y'all been out here when it rained? Yeah. Looks like the water will flow it's that right, way. Yeah, it, it's right there. Yeah. We're kind of hoping to utilize where it's like a little higher, um, and then let that just be the drain part of. Cause it's gonna come from you know the hill as a whole but i want to plant um a willow in this area that will soak up a lot of that water to keep this drier down here yeah for shade i can see you're yeah. probably going to need shading yes shade yeah. shade cloths and stuff yes. screening that'd be a good area for a pin maybe back against them trees yeah all right well, you guys got quite the operation. I, w I had no idea all the foster. How many fosters do you have other than the places we just seen? Uh, I think we have 25 total fosters. Wow. And our foster guys, it's not easy, you know. And no, our fosters. Two, are two older ladies were doing it, and you've seen the scale of that. <laughs> Puts me to shame. Yeah, our fosters are what make everything work. And foster is for people that don't know what a foster is. Um, so we don't, people. yeah, we don't have a physical facility, so we're not a shelter. So what we do is we have 25 different families that have volunteered to keep a dog for short term at their home. We provide a dog pen if they need it, um, food, medicine. We take them to and from the vet. Um, we have a volunteer named Jessie that does that for us, and she's amazing. But pretty much we just need places for uh, people that can let a dog have a sleepover for a couple months at yep. their house and then we get them on to their forever home and when my the puppies were millie had puppies i, I immediately contacted her before she they were even born and it takes a while you got to get them uh, medicated spayed and neutered yes before that they're sent to minnesota and, and what is that the only state where you send them we send to minnesota new jersey and connecticut so, so. um but we do so spay and neuter, that's an Arkansas state law for any um, nonprofit rescue or, or shelter that if you adopt out a dog, it has to be spayed or neutered. So we get that done on every dog unless we send a really small puppy and then we have a contract to where we can follow up with that that they get done when they're age appropriate. Um, okay. And that's, that's legal too, but yeah, that's very important. And you know, if people would just spay and neuter their own animals, that would help yeah, us out a lot. I don't know. I don't think we'll ever see that day. But, you know, Arkansas, anywhere in the south is really bad uh, for unwanted dogs. That's what I'll call them. Uh, the other day, I went to the hardware store, and there was two dogs there, and they'd been there for a week. So I, I know for a fact they were not, they didn't get lost. That's a popular dump area. For puppies because it's right in the city limits yeah. the city will pick them up but you cannot bring them from the county and so i knew and they're in a foster now right yes yeah blue healers yes they're beautiful too yep. both little males they're well behaved <clears throat> yeah all right guys we're gonna wrap it up uh keep them in mind i will have the links in the description they need you know they're always needing food medic it just never ends yeah. and now they want to turn this into a uh, medical facility to for the real sick ones to care for so if you want to follow yeah. us on facebook it's furry tales rescue um and we do appreciate everything that you've done for us so thank no, no you so problem. much and i got a 10 by 10 brand new kennel if y'all want it oh yes absolutely i use it for the puppies <laughs> uh the subscribers helped me get that so yeah. i'll give it to you guys i should have brought you. it today but it's kind of running late so yeah, yeah. but you that guys can have awesome. that thank so. you all right guys thanks for watching Happy trails. <laughs> <laughs>